Alright, right, fine. I admit it. I lied. Uh, I like this guy just enough. I thought I'd give him another week of uh, personal shelf space before I moved on to the Brother Combiner Wars set that I got. Um, what is it, two weeks ago at this point? So, uh, yeah, no Combiner Wars for this week. Or at least that's what I should have said on Monday and here it is Saturday. So, yep, taking care of that. I just like it. Um, as a further update, there's been a few cracks that are showing in the armor. I don't like the way strafes... Uh, is this strafe? Yeah. Like the, I don't like the way strafes... Uh, the way the, the two halves of his legs line up. When you try when you try to squeeze it together to make certain that the knee joint is solidly tabbed into place, it has this, this weird overlap that happens on the, on the, the lower leg that I'm not entirely thrilled with. Um, much as I enjoy Light Steed... Um, his hands have popped off three times now, which is really, really frustrating. I don't like that. Um, let's see, what's the other thing? There were two things that were really frustrating about him that I've been kind of glossing over. There was the hands and the ball joints in his hips and shoulders are a bit on the weak side now. It's only been, you know, two weeks since I opened it, so a week and a half, two weeks, something, something like that. Um, let's see, and then we've got Nose Cone, who his ball joints and the shoulders are kind of weird, and I think, um, not necessarily Nose Cone, but Strafe after... God, I've forgotten already. It's not Afterburner. They changed... After Breaker. After Breaker, Strafe, and, uh, yeah, I think it is Nose Cone. Those three could easily have done the whole, you know, fit the thigh into the lower leg thing. They could have just had a telescoping feature. They didn't really need them to be able to bend, although I, I suppose for an elbow joint, I guess they did, so whatever. But as opposed to opening this and creating an extra section that folds up and down like this and then having it sandwich in on it again, which can be interesting, yes, but it's structurally unstable because you've got this extra motion that you have to deal with and then you have to sandwich it together and because all three of these that I just mentioned deal with friction only tabs just behind the knees or to the sides of the knees um, it, it, it can lead to uh, structural strength for the robot when it's by its or the figure when it's by itself and when you're switching it back and forth. So I'm a little bit concerned that there's friction is being applied to places it really shouldn't be applied to. And there's, there's, uh, it's not so tight that it's going to break. That's not what I'm saying at all. I got something in my eye. That's nice. I'm not saying that there's, that there's so much friction in the joints that's going to break. I'm just saying you could have had it just telescope, you know have the thigh telescope into the lower leg and that would have been just fine instead of having this open up and then having an extra joint to fold that down just so it can sandwich down again so that's that's a bit of an issue that's kind of a they, they probably wanted to try and separate from from designs of the past that had telescoping legs which they still do once in a great while although not nearly as much as they used to admittedly um it in this, in the case of Combiner Wars, for these guys, all three of them could have benefited from that. Um, something else, Afterbreaker, his back wheel, getting those two wheels to sandwich back together again, uh, it's a bloody nightmare. It's just... Uh, and his shoulders are still really, really tight. I don't know why they're so tight. Uh, the ratcheting hips and knees and shoulders are still working just fine. Um, the friction on strafe, on, on strafe that holds a uh, scrounge and, uh, pic Pixar, Pixel, Praxis, what's that thing called? I can't think of his, what his little friend up there is called anymore, I don't know. But anyways, this little guy up here, oh, that's totally out of frame. Little guy up top there, he's fine, whatever. Uh, although it's still impossible as hell to get the, the the peg out of his out of his torso there for the for the gun mode. That's just I still don't like that. Um, but anyway, scrounge uh, because of how his hip or because of how his I'll say his his inner torso joint, the way it folds around between vehicle and and robot mode, uh, it has removed 
enough friction at this point that when you plug it into strafe it's really really loose on here and actually pops off quite easily so uh, here it is let's see it's that's his waist and that's that that's his hips right there and so this tab folds down into there as part of the transformation but this also serves a secondary purpose as a peg hole as a as a peg port for that peg right there so yeah there there is an increasing friction issue there it'll get to the point where this doesn't attach and I'd also like to point out that strafe strafe's nose cone was specifically modified to have that peg on there exclusively for Scrounge and his little friend up there so when the friction on that goes it basically makes this whole thing useless yeah Afterbreaker is kind of a pain in the ass to work with. I'm still kind of like transforming into any of his modes. It's just, it. I think most of it's just the sandwiching thigh into lower leg thing that that's most of the trouble. So, eh, whatever. The waist transformation joints on nose cone are are starting to become loose as well. Like originally they were really tight, like get out, out there. But now that you've put, now that I have put so much force on it, it's just. Yeah, now they're really, really loose, and I'm like, uh, didn't know what I had until I lost it. So that's the hopefully final update on Combiner Wars Computron. Still a good set. Oh, the, uh, it's still really difficult to get the, um, not to get the fists into the bottom of the feet, but rather to remove them. That's the difficult part, because they're pegged in there really well. So I'm tempted to sand off or file off one of the one of the tabs so that the, the fist can get in and out of there easier. Mm. So out with the old and in with the actually older. Got this from Hobby Link Japan. Yay. Make sure you handle it with care. This came in on the 4th. Um, this was very much an impulse buy. Yes, absolutely, I want to get these, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a combination of little purchases that'll kind of kill you in the long run, as opposed to, you know, really big purchases at one time. So, this is kind of a, this, this was an impulse buy. This is, oh, hey, Hobby Link Japan is having a sale, so I might as well take advantage of it. Um, I ordered another one that was, at the moment, out of stock, but I received a notice, uh, the day after this shipped, I received a notice. I received a notice that uh, the other one is has been processed and is in stock. Uh, I'm suspecting it's going to ship either today or Monday. So this had a three-day shipping on it. The other will have a three-day shipping on it as well. So. <coughs> so I make no bones about the fact that I love SD Gundam. I would not have played SD Gundam Capsule Fighter online for three and a half years if I didn't enjoy SD Gundam. Uh, I said it at the time, and I'll say it again. If it hadn't been for the fact that it was SD Gundam, uh, if it hadn't been for the property, the intellectual property, not that there was much intelligence happening in that game when I played it, um, I wouldn't have bothered. If it hadn't been SD, if it hadn't been Gundam, I wouldn't have I wouldn't have even bothered playing the game because there were there were a lot of decisions made in that game. I'm I'm still like yeah I enjoyed playing it, but there was a lot of negative bullshit that I had to put up with when I played SD Gundam. So or SD Gundam Capsule Fighter Online uh, was I upset that SD Gundam Next Generation disappeared? No, not really because it didn't really fix any of the things. It just kind of added some more dynamic play. And oh, by the way, they still had melee dash, which I hated, or auto dash, which I auto melee dash, which I hated. I hated. I hated. I hated. And they still use dumb fire for non dumb fire related things. <clears throat> It's okay to use auto cannons and uh, Gauss rifles in uh, Mech Warrior Online. You've seen a number of my videos, most of them without those weapons. Uh, and that's all well and good uh, because the targets are big and they're slow. Now, you don't necessarily use a Gauss rifle on a locust. Fair enough, unless the locust is miraculously standing still or isn't paying attention. Fair enough. But, you know, using cluster cluster dumbfire rockets against these little paper ninjas that are doing this and this and bam 
get good scrub you know that never worked that was never intended and for whatever reason people shrugged with it on a regular basis i never liked that where are the tanks where are the aircraft where are the bases where are the turrets where are all the things that dump fire where where are the ships where are the battleships and whatnot well, warships that that actually do move slowly that those things are intended for use on uh we'll develop them in a couple more years they never did anything about it and they were also fairly useless against um well, no, I guess I can't claim that in mission mode, in, in player versus player versus computer stuff. So, eh. And then there was the, the trolley player, play, player base. There was technical glitches on both sides of the ISP, I'd like to point out. Um, the fact that I was playing on a computer that didn't have a graphics card on it, which I didn't know at the time that I was playing, because I didn't know. Um... And there were trolls, and there was incompetent uh, game uh, publishers, uh, OG Planet specifically, which, I don't know, have they... I don't keep track of them, I don't care. So anyways, I love SD Gundam. I always have. I very much thoroughly enjoyed SD Gundam. And uh, I brought it up a couple of times. In fact, I purchased, uh, was it two, three weeks ago, I went to that model show in uh, downtown Renton, Washington. Uh, I picked up that SD Gundam Exia. My second SD Gundam XE, I, I bought the first one off of eBay, and it was already assembled, which I didn't know at the time. So I bought a second one, I was like, hey, I'm going to paint these up differently, and, you know, I'll do one that's normal, and then I'll do one that's in Trans Amers. Or at least that's what I'm guessing, I don't know, if I ever get around to actually making them. <laughs> which is why I totally bought a couple of more SD Gundam kits, such as the SD Strike Noir, Gundam, which I had one of these in SD Gundam, uh, SDGO by the way. Uh, this was not in the show. In case you don't know what the Strike Noir is, the Strike Noir comes from Stargazer, if I remember correctly, and it's basically a it's basically a refined version of the Strike Gundam that has um, that has the attributes of all three of the Striker packs. Or uh, is that what they're called, Striker packs? I don't remember anymore all three of the packs that you, you could attach to it. So it's got the launcher, the ale, and is it sword? Yeah, sword uh, packs. All three of those are kind of wrapped up into this one. And this is now r registered as a, a special special operations unit because it comes with a pair of dual pistols. Yeah! I really enjoyed using the one out of two versions that they had in SD Gundam Capsule Fighter, and uh, yeah, absolutely, I'm going to get one of these. So, yay, I got Strike Noir Gundam. Yay. You know, maybe I should be an asshat and do the thing that one of my frequent Skypers and YouTubers, Prime Lady 2, does and just say, here's some, here's some trees and some stuff. You know, actually, I should look at these myself well most of those stickers aren't going to get used except they are because I don't paint I'd like to paint whatever and then here's the second tree I'm sorry second and third tree this is going to date me a bit I remember a time when Gunpla was just Gundam model kits it wasn't Gunpla and that's all well and good and it was just came in a single um, a single color and then if you wanted to get a different an alternate color you'd either have to paint it or you would have to or or the kit would come with a separate tree that came with the separate parts well multi-gate technology came along in the uh, late 90s early 2000s thereabouts and they were able to get multiple colors onto the exact same tree so it's a bit of a novelty for me at this point to say that uh, oh I've got, I've got model kits now that have multi-gate technology or multi-gate manufacturing techniques on them there's I mean it's 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 primarily black and then has one piece of yellow four pieces of uh, red all on one tree all in one molding process that's cool oh and then the back one has uh, has uh, let's see I think it's one, two, three, four pieces of gray, and the rest of it is black. And you can't separate them because they're literally, the plastics are molded together. They're injected into the same mold at the same time. Cool and very efficient. And then, of course, there's the instruction kit, or <laughs> instruction booklet, I suppose. I suppose. Okay. 
Very nice. Shows off everything very nicely. You still have to paint this thing, by the way. You know, out of the box, it's not going to look anything like this. But it'll look something... Actually, yeah, they don't show it unpainted here. Uh, can you believe it, folks? The Strike Noir Gundam is the bad guy in, in the OVA. Hmm. Shoulders can articulate forward and backwards, which is nice. Uh, it's got elbows, ball-jointed wrist, ball-jointed... Um, ankles. Swings are very flexible, I'd like to point out. Hmm. Yep, straight Norg on them. Yee. Hmm. I saw, um, Stargazer, but I... You know, I didn't, I didn't like Seed, and people said, oh, Stargazer is so much better. Stargazer was just kind of a compilation of a couple of scenes here and there or that, that happened at different periods during a war that I gave absolutely zero shits about. So, like, I didn't, you know, by the time I saw it, the damage had already been done. Um, yeah. And then I also got a significantly larger and somewhat older kit. Let's see, this was made in 19... Let's see, this was made in 2006. And the V2 Buster, V2 Assault Buster, was made in... 99. So this kit's almost 20 years old. Is that... Oh my god, this kit is almost 20 years old. Huh? What I like about the original BB Senji... BB Senji, you know, G generation, I'm sorry, G generation kits is the box art right here mirrored what you originally saw in the Master Grade version of the kits, which is really nice. That, that was neat, and it, it, it wasn't even Barity. It's just it's the exact same mobile suit in the exact same pose, the same decoration, and everything. It's just it's been cutified, cutified, cutified. So yes, and this is this a Soul Buster? Yeah, this is a Soul Buster, I think. It just says V2 Gundam, it doesn't... Yeah. Now, as I understand it, this kit... Here's the... Here's half of it. And again, multi-gate technology in 1999. Here's yellow and red on a, on a mostly blue... Um, thing. And uh, that's the only multi-gate. And then there's gold and white and more dark blue. So, yeah. As I understand it, this kit is an either-or kind of kit. You can make it as the Victory, uh, the V2 Gundam by itself, the V2 Assault, uh, V2 Assault by itself, or the V2 Buster by itself. Gosh, I'm going to be torn. Honestly, I might, I might do it up as a V2 Buster just because I liked it so much in SD Gundam. Just saying. I used it a lot. Scattering beam guns and dumb fires are a very strange combination, but it worked really well if you could understand how to make it work. It didn't hurt either that it had ridiculous amounts of reload rates either. So, yes. Which I gushed about in a number of my videos. So, yes. Hmm. Ah, it has a little, uh, has a little sensor eye patch that folds over it. There's a little switch on the back of the head. That's funny. I don't think that you can. <gasps> no way! Oh, it's it's a spring-loaded missile in the in the rifle. When you pull the trigger on it, it actually fires a little missile. Wow! They don't do that anymore because stupid kids and stupid parents. I guess even in Japan, that's an issue. Probably losing most of the missiles, anyways. Wow! Cool. Oh, the eye patch comes down. Eye patch comes down. I thought it slid in from the side. Whatever. Oh, maybe you can multi-mode this. Maybe, if you if you don't glue anything. Yeah, and then you can remove the center torso and you can add on the uh, the core fighter components, <laughs> which looks like a little skateboard. I'd like to point out. <laughs> That's great. And I'd also like to point out this. Uh, the V2 Assault Buster, SDV2 Assault Buster, is among the last, was among the, the generation of, G-generation of kits that came with uh, no, no leg. 
articulation whatsoever. It was the the skirt was plugged directly into the into the the angles, and that was it. And honestly, that's the way I prefer my SD. I prefer my SD Gundam kits to well SD in general the, to not have the legs at all, which is why SD Evangelion units are really really difficult to pull off, pull off. I'd like to point out. I'm of the opinion you can SD or chibi just about any kind of mecha. Evangelion not that easy is is one of the exceptions where I say you can't you can't SD it very easily. Now I'm sure there are exceptions to that in fan art and whatever that's all well and good but from my experience or my understanding SD Evangelion just, just doesn't work. You can do it on the you can do it on the human characters whatever but you can't do it to the Avas. You can also do it to the angels. Yay. As long as I can multi-mode this at will, uh, I will be satisfied. But if it's if it's if it's a, an either-or kind of kit, then I'll be then I'll be a bit upset about that. Uh, I'm not going to be making a third, or I'm not going to make another video for the third. Uh, all right, SD Gundam kit that I got, but I got myself the SD Dendromian Orchid, which was absolutely my baby in SD Gundam Capsule Fighter. I uh, believe it or not, the Dendromian Orchid. Um, it's, it's a big, blocky, ugly thing. The Orchid, it's, or no, I'm sorry, the, the Stamen, the, the Gundam Stamen itself, I've never liked it. I don't like the head design, I don't like the torso, I don't like the, the arms, and I don't like the legs, and I don't like the feet either. Like, there's nothing about it that I like. The, like, the proportions are all wrong, and just, no, you know, I didn't, I didn't like it. So, I don't like the Stamen, but the Orchid covers up all that because all you see is the shoulders a little bit at the top of the, the the torso and then you see the heads okay so it doesn't cover everything but still why are you squeaking so much i really need to get a new pair of headphones but anyways yes um i have an sd uh Dendrobiot orchid on the way maybe i should get two of them one that uh, one that's painted up the way it appears in the is it, 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 it i can't remember if uh Stardust Memories classified as a an OVA or a mini series. I don't remember. I think it's an OVA. It's a it's you put all the episodes together, it becomes an OVA. Um, but anyways, uh, maybe I should get two of them. One that I would paint up as you know how it appears in the OVA, and then another one that's painted up the way I had it in SD Gundam Capsule Fighter, or at least how I would have had it painted up in SD Gundam pa Capsule Fighter if they had let me do it that way. God, I missed that thing. Ugh. I miss my Dendrobian Orchid in that game. <laughs> it was so fun, and, and I was among the few players who could actually use the damn thing efficiently. You always saw the one with the dual fire bazookas, but, you know, beyond that, people would just kind of purge it right away. There, wait, no, did it purge? Yeah, it... Uh, well, it's only been three years, so I guess I'm forgetting at this point whether the, the SR-ranked Dendrobian Orchid could purge or not. Hmm. All right. So, yep. Here's two more kits. And now for something completely different. So I actually bought this on March 29th, 30th thereabouts, and it got to me on April 23rd. It took over 20 days to get to me, not including processing, because like it was on sale from Hobby Link Japan. And, and and I wasn't planning on getting them. Like I couldn't. I I don't care. Whatever. Um, but you know they were cheap and they were on sale. Like okay, they look good quality. Let's let's see what the other side of the tracks looks like. So uh, on an impulse buy, I bought two. Now there's actually like five or six of these things. Uh, but uh, I think I'll just get these two and call it good. Uh, but I decided to get the slowest shipping rate because it's it said 10 to 30 days via SAL. So like, okay, you know, I, I live in Washington State. It'll get to me fairly quickly, and I've never had problem with customs before. It took 23 days to get to me. They probably packed it on a shipping container and sailed it. I mean, literally sailed it across the Pacific Ocean. Which, okay, that explains the 10 days, whatever it is. But, you know... 20, 23 days for a 10 to 30 day shipping thing. Who, who gets it in 10 days? Alaska? Hawaii? Australia? Probably not. So how they could justify saying that this would take minimum 10 days to get to the United States of America. And usually, I mean, th those SC Gundams, I purchased them on, uh, was it April 31st, I think? When did I purchase those? 
I'm sorry, April 30th. I, pu I purchased them on the last day of April. I purchased them on April 30th. They were at my doorstep four days later. Bam, done. Well, they got they got here on the 4th. So, yeah, no, they got here. I'm sorry, they got here. No, yesterday was the 4th. Because uh, that's, I did the, the, the little, uh, whatchamacallit in Langley, Washington over on Whidbey Island. Um the little was it south would be convention whatever it was this is a cute little thing whatever uh i got it the day before so i got it on april 3rd right maybe i did get it yesterday suddenly i don't remember doesn't matter no i didn't get it yesterday i got it on the third i'm confusing myself um so that that was a four-day turnaround from when i purchased this set as opposed to this thing it took it took them 23 days to get to me what the crap so lesson learned and you know i've been sitting on this for a week now over a week now because copytron and those guys and and things and stuff um and video editing projects that i haven't quite published just yet and i'm not going to tell you about until well i might publish them tonight i'm not sure or maybe tomorrow i'm not sure anyways um or i'll start publishing them tomorrow something like that anyways um yeah and again, this is not a high priority. Like, I was aware of it when it came out a year, two years ago. But like, okay, that's cute, whatever. But they were on sale, and it was like, mm. so, all right, I'll get them. It's harmless. Oh, good, the microphone was unmuted. Whew. There have been times where I have made videos where the microphone wasn't running, and it's, er, reviews, where I've done unboxings and videos and stuff like that where the audio wasn't working. You look at it late, and you're like, oh, God damn it. Such as the audio from the Toys R Us tribute that I should have finished and didn't. Because the audio didn't work properly. <laughs> but again, I'm not entirely certain if that was the camera's fault, the computer's fault, or my fault. I'm not entirely certain. So, from my perspective, this is a brand new... I can't say franchise, but I can't say brand. A brand new brand that I've never encountered before. This is entirely new to me. And it will be also be my only exposure to it. I think something was recently announced and was like, oh, maybe I should. I don't know. We'll see. It, it depends on how these turn out. So, Oh, that's cute. It has a little animal face on it. Mm -hmm. As I understand it, these are the deluxe releases of the original version. So, like, these come with a little more benefit. They're like, e either they're like, slightly repainted to like better uh better match what you saw on the tv show i don't know so something like that or they have more accessories than the original release did which you did see in the series but was not in the original toy release when the show first started it's it's there's something you know special specialty about these boy i feel really uncomfortable opening these so uh I'm not quite certain if it's Shinkalion or Shinkarion. I'm not entirely certain. It's made by Takara Tomy, and it's uh, trains, high-speed trains that turn into giant robots. Giant robots, because why not? So this is the hero of the show. This is E5 Hayabusa, Hayabusa, however you say it. And it's very much based off of the... Uh, the actual, I mean, the, these are all based off of the actual uh, Shinkarion, Shin, Shinkalion high-speed trains that they use in Japan. Uh, they're just, they just kind of made up a thing that said, hey, by the way, they secretly transform into robots. So, yep, yeah, I got this one. And then I've got E6 Komachi. Komachi, Komachi, I'm not certain. So yes, let's crack these open and see what happens. Where do I want to put you? I'm going to put you over here for now. It's not because you're number two in the series, I promise. <gasps> Don't fall, I just got you. But it does come from uh, Takara Tomi. Other than Transformers, I don't think I've ever purchased anything from Takara Tomi. When I was very little, much littler than I am now, when I was SD... Uh, I remember my dad, and this was long before the internet existed also, I'd like to point out. Um, my dad got his hands on, how do you open this? Uh -huh. My dad got his hands on a number of, uh, I think it was just Tomy 
at the time. Like, Takara Tomi was a merger of some kind. I, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, and they made little little battery-powered trains that are about this big. They're only not very big, not, not even six inches long. Uh, more like four and a half, three inches long. And then they'd go around in little blue-colored tracks, enclosed tracks. And that was really neat. That was really awesome. And God damn it, I was never able to find those catalogs. I don't know what he did with them. Um, so unfortunately, I can't tell you which one, which versions they were, or what year they came out, or what colors they were. I don't know. Um, so I was almost a toy train collector. I was almost a toy train collector, but it didn't happen. As it happened, my dad had a bunch of Macross, Dorvac, um, or a Battler Dunbine, and a bunch of other kits. They were sitting in his closet, which he also never built. I'd like to point out. At least as far as I'm aware, he never did. So there's two separate boxes here. Oh, great, a decal sheet. Oh, boy. Not many. Only uh, five decals. It's not bad. How am I going to get these back in here? Seriously. So, again, I know absolutely nothing about Shin Shinkalion. I think it's Shinkarion. I'm, I'm not... I know nothing about it. It's just kind of kids who pilot giant robots. You know, preteens who pilot giant robots. You know, if it can work for Maro Ray and Shinji Ikari, then, you know, why can't it work for these kids? I don't know. And I don't care. Maybe you should try watching it. Don't care. And I think I'll leave the decals for, uh, I'll leave the decals for later. Might not need them. I'm not certain. But yeah, this is completely different from Transformers, made by the same people, you know, the same design firm who does Transformers, but it's uh, completely... Oh, there's stuff on the back. Okay. Fairly simple to transform, as I understand, or mer morph, as I understand. Hmm. What is this, this grit? It was on the outside of the box, it was on these boxes individually. Maybe that's sea salt. Why is my nose itchy when I wear headphones? When I wear these headphones? What is going on here? It is so stupid. You know, I might, I might just flatten those boxes because there's no way I'm keeping these. At least I'm not going to keep them intact. Oh, why would you tape that? Why? Okay, you're not gonna... So there's the weapons. Two swords and a bigger sword. I saw a... Uh, unrelated to this, I saw a video recently of somebody who oh wait I saw that <gasps> I almost throw this away Woo. what is this ah this must be the specialty piece I saw a video on YouTube explaining in in the grim dark future of Warhammer 40,000 why do they insist on using melee can't you just shoot them from a distance um, and it had nothing to do with the honor, you know, with, with, with melee being the most honorable form of combat. It had nothing to do with that. The guy was like, seriously, this is why this happens, this is why that happens, and this is why, at the very least, you should be carrying combat knives, and, uh, uh, you know, you should be, you should carry some form of melee around with you, because when you're going up against uh, evil aliens that are far faster than any human, even enhanced human, could track, uh, you kind of need a backup. So, and he seemed to make a good case for it. I'll, li I'll link it in the description if I can find it, if it's still around. Oh, I tore it. Wonderful. Oh, wow. Well. I'm just going to store it back in the box anyways. It's going to rattle around for... Or, oh, look! It's got one of those... Uh, it's got one of those codes on it. Okay, so I believe this is used with the henching device. And this is this is what makes the kit special. I think, aside from the fact that it's got some additional weapons, I think this is what makes this kit a DX version or whatever it is. And this fits into the the henching device or the summoning device or whatever it is they use. It's not a, it's not really a henching device because they don't uh, they don't transform into super suits or whatever it is. Again, I haven't seen the show, so I don't know. But as I, as far as I'm aware, this. This little accessory right here, which, uh, as far as I'm aware, it doesn't interact with anything else. This is just for the henching device. How many times has that happened in Super Sentai, I'd like to point out. And Command Rider and Ultraman. Shinkansen Ultra Evolution Institute. There, There is uh, some Japanese Shinkalian IC card system. 
E5 Hayabuse. 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 Something like that. So there's that. Yay. I'll, no, I'll never I'll never use it, but it does have a uh, it does have a cell phone um, print. Uh, what do they call those things? Barcode? Is that really a barcode anymore? I don't know. I don't know what it's called. Anyways, it has one of those. So you scan your cell phone over it if you've got the app, and excuse me, it can read it. So yay. I don't think I'll sell it because I, I do want to keep the set intact. But uh, yeah, I've got that, and okay. Boy, that's wrapped on there really tight. Jeez. Considering this toy series, the connection points, the, I'm sorry, the connection joints, the, the train connector joints, strike me as really flimsy. I've seen a number of reviews before and after I purchased this, and uh, it, it does seem to have that issue. Oh, I see. Oh, that that's a subtle detail. Wow. Go down all the way, damn it. Trying to get the cockpit in there. Oh yeah, by the way, this is the head. Is this a spring? No. Okay, this goes down, snaps into place, so why isn't this? Can't even tell what it's hitting on. Is it related to this? It's related to this. Maybe if you look at the instructions, you'd have your answer. Huh? Oh. Oh, okay. Well, okay, so i got to open up the guts of this thing. Um, there we go. Okay. Okay, so you got to fold all that out. That goes down. That goes down. This holds it in place. That holds it in place. There we go. Okay. And then... Huh. Okay, so you're gonna. Oh, oh, okay. So you can only deploy the head uh, when the when the waste connector down here has already been opened up. Good. Prevents the head from popping up whenever it's in train mode. I suppose that's appreciable. Okay. There's a really flimsy connector right there. Let's go for the middle car. Oh. Apparently it's a parts former. Mm. I'm not going to say all my childhood because trains were never a big part of my childhood. I had one, I think I had like one train. You had the option to put the tiniest pieces of dry ice into the into the section. And then as the train, the train would either go forward. It, it, it didn't go on a track. It actually, like concrete or wood floor, or linoleum, whatever. It would roll forward and then, you know, steam or um, dry ice would come out the top of it. And then if you, and the, it would only go forward or it would back up and turn it only go forward and it would make some noises. It, would, uh, it was radio controlled, by the way. Not, no, it was a remote or radio. Gosh, I don't remember all of a sudden. All of a sudden, I don't remember. Yeah, I haven't thought about it in decades. So, yeah, that's pretty much as close as I got to trains, which is not true because then I turned around and got uh, the Den Liner from uh, Kamen Rider Deno. I was planning to get more Den Liner cars, but I just didn't happen, unfortunately. And now I suppose because I didn't get more of the cars, I just have the the Den Liner Goka. This was yeah, Den Liner Goka. Uh, because I didn't get more of them, uh, it just kind of sits there unused, collecting a lot of dust, and it's it's been, what, almost 20 years? No, not that long. And then I got the, uh, the Train Brothers from Transformers Robots in Disguise, or the original R.I.D., I should say. Gosh, it's hard to see, because it's a dark, it's a dark gray piece on a white background. But it's still hard to see because it's a bit on the small side. Ah, okay. So that pegs in with friction. Do it up high, Eva. People can't see it. And that's up high like that. And because this is the, uh, the storage car, I guess it means it's time to open up the weapons. You know, maybe I should put my camera down a little farther, because, like, I'm, I'm looking down, but you guys can't see what I'm doing, so maybe I should point the camera a little further down. I usually don't unbox like this, so... Oh, there's his crown. There's the crown. 
And again, I'm not going to say good or ill of the toys or the toy or the toy line or the or the show itself, just because I'm neutral on the matter. I don't know. Uh, but I do know the weapons are specifically designed to. Um, oh wow, that's just friction. That's just, oh. It appears mine is a little, a little out of the hole. So here's a sword. Half beam sword, half crystal, half I don't know what. But there's the sword. I'll just fold that out. No springs, no machinations. It's just a little friction pin, and that's it. That folds away. Oh, these are really tiny. It's hard to see what I'm doing. Uh, the weapons for this series, and indeed for this particular release, for these deluxe releases, they're specifically designed to... I am going to tilt my camera down a little. I don't know how far, so you're going to be getting a bit more crutch shots than usual, and you're going to see more of my mouth than you are of my eyes. Um, as I understand it, the weapons are are designed to, um, what's the word I'm looking for, peg in in different locations. So it, the, the weapons, at least, are kind of parts formers-ish, which, eh, that's fine, whatever. Because it doesn't say specifically on there which way to peg them in, so I'm just guessing at the moment. Okay, that just pegs in, and it barely holding, but that's okay. It's holding, and that's enough. And the door is going to be closed up on it anyway, so that doesn't matter so much. Peg the weapons in there. It's not a very strong friction, but whatever. And then we'll close this up. <laughs> the uh, green... Is, I don't I don't know how it's coming across here, but it's very sparkly. There's they've got uh, they've got a glitter kind of uh, effect to it, which is nice. I like that. Okay, so there's the weapons. Hmm, a hole and a peg on the on the one side here. It's off center. I wonder why. Find out soon enough. There's a bit of origami happening here, except it's not paper; it's cardboard. I've been watching a lot of Amtrak videos lately. I rode on Amtrak. I rode on Amtrak one time in 1994 when I was what 14 years old? Is that no, 94. I would have been 12, right? Yeah, because I was born in 82. Yeah, I would have been 12 years old at the time. Nah, I couldn't be. Yeah, I guess it would have been, because I was in my first year of middle school. I guess I was 12 years old. Hmm. Anyways, middle school was miserable for me, I'd like to point out. Here's the back half. And here's the front half. So they look, uh... Let's see, I'm going to do it this way. So they look pretty close. I'd say the lower, the lower half is a little bulkier in the in the nose and behind the cockpit because I mean it, it is still oh actually you can't attach them like that very loose and there's a large gap between them the real trains they're much the, the real train they're much closer together but anyways uh, it's very loose and again I haven't owned a train since Denliner in 2000 Denliner Goka in 2007 ish Nine-ish? I don't remember. Anyways, so those don't pull and push. And you separate them by... Oh, hello. Okay. You separate them by doing that. I might have done that a little differently. The latching system is essentially... Or let's see, how do I do this? Is essentially this. That's how it works. So, you know, depending on how which way it's turned, that's how it works. So that's how these work. Presumably that's the back. Oh, by the way, that red thing is the telegraph for the electrical power that's supplied. The overhead power supply. Come on. There we go. I bet you those broke a lot. 
So here is the completed... Is this Hayabusa? Yeah, Hayabusa. It's this guy. See, and that's the front and that's the back. Now, obviously, the the gap between them... The, this is... Whatever. The reason it's so there's so much space between the cars is because this is meant to go on a on a on a toy train. So it's meant to be able to turn, you know, to have a significant turning radius. So that's why they're spaced so far apart from each other. Which that that doesn't bother me. I mean, yeah, it would be nice to have them like snap together, or whatever. But I mean, I can I can live with this. So whatever. Paint detailing is really nice, though. Are those decals? I think they are. Completely, totally out of focus, I know, but still. And then again, this is Takara Tomi, so I'm fairly certain they know what they're talking about. And there's the middle car. I totally can't see it because it's lined up perfectly with the toy itself. I suppose that's a bit of a good thing. And then the back train, which has... A pair of red lights to indicate you're looking at the back of the train as opposed to the yellow lights on the front to indicate you're looking at the front of the train so you know which one is point which direction it's which direction it's going. Mm. Okay. Let's uh I suppose the praise would be let's henke. I'm not certain. Oh, there we go. I did not have that latched properly. Um, ooh, this is risky business. Yikes. I don't like the way these go together. No. Come on. I'm not going to... Well, I mean, it's going to be displayed in, in robot mode anyway, so... Or it'll be separated, but yeah, I'm not going to... I am not going to deal with that. No, sa. I know it's dead simple, but considering I know nothing... I don't, I don't know how the mechanics of this particular one work. I'm not going to let my... Hashtag transformationist ego get in the way. So here's my question. Why would they put knee joints? Double knee joints, I'd like to point out. And no hip joint and no no hip swivel. Why would they I don't understand why they do that. Okay okay, I can see where it needs to slide, it's just not sliding. Oh! Automorph! Cool. Okay. So as you sl as you sliding the uh, um, oh how does this work? Okay, there we go. So you fold the toe down, and then as you fold the ankle up, this panel on the top slides forward. Okay. Okay. Cool. Cool. So you got a little bit of automorph in there. That's nice. I was trying to figure out how to get these panels to move. It turns out oh no, it's automorph. Okay. There's a little bit of ankle tilt to the inside. Okay. So there's the legs. And I think you're supposed to tilt these forward a little bit. I think they're supposed to be rocket boosters or something like that. It's not it's not leg armor necessarily, but you're supposed to tilt them you're supposed to tilt them forward at an angle like that. And no, they're not supposed to be knee guards. That's not what they're aiming for. But again, why would you put a double knee double knee joint on there which you can very much use and then not put hip joints on it. What is this, Super Sentai? Hmm. Where's the hand? There's the hand. And the hand folds out. Now look at it from the front. And it's actually a... It's, it's one of these kinds. It's a double hinge. And then it pegs into the side. But before you can peg it into the side you have to pull this out and down. I was about to say, you know, that that train connection point is going to be hanging out on the back. It turns out you can flip it around, and it's it's a bit more secure right there. It's not it's not going to flip around. It's not going to get in your way. Friction joints all around. Yay! And they added a little bit of white to the cuffs. One of the cuffs. There, this has been painted right here. Oh. The shoulder's ratchet. Oh. Come on, wake up. Oh. Looks like the right shoulder's ratchet is, is a little on the weak side. So, Okay, so, let's see. 
how do I show you guys? So you pull down on this and get my hands as far back as possible. That pops open. Okay. Nice. And then you untab the back of a scruff. Fold the head forward a little bit. Peg that in. Which is what that additional little bit of crap I was looking at earlier. And then fold the barely there horn up. Doesn't even make a difference. You might as well just leave it fit back. You can't even tell it's there. Why? One half into the other. There we go. It's a nice solid click. Is that hip or waist? Yeah, it is. Okay, it looks like these wheels stay up here. You can let them hang down, but it looks like you can fold them up like that. Why doesn't he have posable hips? Why? Why would you do that? You can make transformers. Why can't you? And you make really nice posable things here, but just... Eh. I have no idea where the cockpit is. Like, this is the cockpit for the train mode, but I don't know if it's, like, deceptive, like, on transformers where... the Or transformers, yeah, right. Where, um... In Super Sentai Power Rangers, where the cockpit usually located in the head, sometimes it's located in the chest, but it's not always the same cockpit where the individual ranger hangs out. So I don't know. Okay, so this is Hayabusa. 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 I don't know how to pronounce it. Yeah, that horn is so insignificant. It's just, it's it's not even worth it to pull that up. It's just, it, it's so tiny, and there's so little friction on it. Screw it, I'm just going to leave it down and, and forget that it even exists. You know, I don't care. Hmm. Gosh, I can't even remember the last time I got a a, a modern-day anime figure. You know, usually it's just Transformers and Super Sentai. That's usually all I go for, so... Like, I've got an anime figure. Mecha notwithstanding. But still, you know. Okay. Let's crack the shell on this. And... Oh, I see. Okay. So, it looks like... When he's usually running around all over the place, he's just this. Yeah, I think it's just it's just this ordinarily. Uh, and then looks like he gets some kind of a power up. The friction in this peg. Holy crap. Oh! Well that's bullshit. We we, we we've got some King Caliber bullshit happening here. Some uh, oh, what was it called in the Daibokan? Um they intentionally put a pair of tabs on the handle so that you can't fit the peg all the way through into the hand. I hate it when they do that. I hate that. It's like, what the hell's the point of having the hand go all the way through if we can't do that? So it's just it's just the tiniest of nubbins that fits in there, and then that's it. Why do toy manufacturers do that? I mean, I can understand the friction issue. Okay, whatever. So, like, uh, Why? It just lightly pegs in there. Hmm. Okay. Head articulation? Oh, wow, it does! Oh my gosh! It's got... It, the head can turn side to side. And it can also look up. Not really down. It can look forward and it can look up. Wow! You know, Bandai? Uh, learn. Because, like, this is a combining robot. This is... Well, nowadays it'd be considered Voyager class, and the er, oh, 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 yeah, this is this is about Voyager Transformers Voyager class size, and I'm talking about Super Sentai. Um, and uh, oh, it's on a ball joint. Wow, it's on a ball joint. Why can't Super Sentai ever make? Uh, why can't Bandai ever make Super Sentai deluxe transforming robos that have ball jointed heads? I mean, it's the smallest of articulations. Why don't they ever do that? Because gimmick. 
So means he's got his sword, which is whatever. Uh, and then he's got some sort of a power-up form. Oh, these are supposed to stay back. Oh, so okay, these these are the the, the side rocket engine things. I said you're supposed to tilt them forward. Not necessarily. No, I think they're trying to treat them as like. Uh, really really long uh, skirt armor that goes like below the knees but it's only on the sides of the legs I think that's what that's the image they're trying to get here because Hayabusa here is supposed to be some kind of a I, I, I think it's supposed to be a samurai thing because you know swords and so I think this is supposed to be really long skirt armor even though it's very much attached nowhere near to the skirt armor or maybe it's just supposed to be stored like that or I I thought those were like rocket engines. I mean, it, it's hollow on the toy. There's nothing, there's like nothing actually there except for a wheel, but I thought they were like rocket engines or something. Okay, well I'm going to tilt mine slightly forward because deal with it. <clears throat> Ratchet and a swivel and friction and friction. Okay. And then these things, um, I started saying it earlier, I thought I'd said it already, um, the weapons are designed to be interchangeable, so there's no like actual correct way to do it. So uh, these can be placed on a number of different places on the figure, they can also be placed on the weapon itself. Uh, there's no like correct way to do it. Um, there's actually quite a few peg holes right there. Now obviously this is multi-purpose and it's supposed to be, you know, plug into a bunch of different locations. But um there's there's like there's one peg on one side of the sword but it's not on the other side. There's a pair of peg holes in the side here, there's a pair of pegs on the back. So for example <gasps> Alright <clears throat> we will do that if you insist. For example you can do this with the thing and there's there's nothing against that. Um, and then if you store it inside of the train, the train itself in the, in the train car mode, and then when you attach it to the train, you would just fold it up like that. So that's what it is for storage. I wish there was more friction on that, on that, on the main blade. There's not enough friction there. I know I'm complaining two years late about a, about a toy line that I know absolutely nothing about, but I'm still allowed to complain. Oh, I forgot. Um, in, ca in case you think he has too many uh, melee weapons. Can these be used as swords? Yeah, they can, I guess. I mean, you could peg them into the hands. There's nothing against it. Um, but in case you're wondering, the real, uh, the real train, this is the connection point for uh, between two different engines. But on this toy, or in the, in the, the Shinkalian series, um, it's actually a, a beam cannon of some kind. So he's got a little beam cannon that's completely out of focus. Man, I wish I had an, uh, a manual focus on this camera. It's so frustrating sometimes. Like, it's focused on me because I'm far enough away. But if I hold something up close, you can't see it. And it doesn't autofocus. It's so frustrating. Ava, you should get a better webcam. Shut up. And he doesn't have hip articulation. <sighs> Still a uh, nice looking figure. <laughs> The paint on those tabs on the, the, the little nose cone thing, it's going to wear out so fast. Why didn't they just mold it in color? Oh, they did. All right. Whatever. So, yeah, he's got a beam cannon located in his chest, as any decent super robot would. Is this a super robot? I, I guess it would be. I don't know. I know nothing about Shinkalian. Maybe it's like Evangelion in that it kind of dances the lane between real robot and super robot. Might be one of those things. So these can be pegged onto, you can peg it onto the top here like this. Uh, you can peg it onto the top of the shoulder like this. You can peg it on there. Uh, there's two different slots here and here you can peg it into. Uh, there's pegs on the sides of the arms so you can get, <coughs> excuse me. You can get, uh, you know, you can get some arm blade action going. You can put them on the sides. <coughs> Excuse me. You can put them on the sides of the nose of the the, the front nose of the, I'm sorry, the back of the train. So you can actually store them uh, on the sides of the legs if you want to. There's a number of different places you can you can peg those in. 
Sculpting detail is nice as well. Totally out of focus, I know. It's all fuzzy, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do about it. But still, you know, there's some nice detailing. Especially on the back. That's nice. Because the train armor is supposed to be all smooth and shiny because of aerodynamics, I guess. But uh, the robot parts don't look bad. Although I can very much see where a couple of those decals are going to be going. I think I am going to have to add the decals. <clears throat> And then he comes with a crown, which is apparently used for a uh, what call it? It's used for uh, it's used for a combined form. So we will be I'll be dealing with that momentarily. You know, I might just leave this on here uh, when when it's in robot mode. I might just leave it attached so I don't have to think about it. Well, there's zero margin for error when you put this on. Holy crap. So it's a slightly larger crown you stick on him. It's just, you know, a crown and a little crest on the top. I think I might just do it that way. Just, you know, not even bother with that puny little white thing that they stuck in there. Now, I thought that this was used as, like, a shield or something because there is a there is a peg hole on the bottom and there's three peg holes there and there's also that mysterious slot on the top here that I don't I don't quite know what that's for that slot right there so I don't know what to say there do these fold all the way back well they do I don't think I broke it just now I don't think because they they both gave fairly easily so there's a number of options happening here. I don't know. Okay. So that's it for Hayabusa. And then I'll move moving on to Komachi next. decals. I thought I could skip them on Hayabusa, but uh, on uh, Komachi. Komachi, I might actually have to add those decals. not going to put this packaging unlike most of the boxes that I get Transformers Super Sentai Lego whatever usually I keep the internal packaging but since it's all cardboard um I might and you know it's packaged in just a certain way uh probably not going to bother with the packaging this time or with the uh, with preserving the uh the cardboard interior cardboard stuffing yeah I'm not going to bother with instructions because this is, after all, just a repaint. You want to go that way? Okay, we'll go that way. Well, slight remold. I think the, uh... The, uh... Come on, get out of there. Yeah, so the crown is done differently. Um, and the, uh, the chest cannon has been removed. On, uh, on this one. What's it called? Komachi. I just, I just have to get it in my head. Komachi. The weapons are also different. Completely off topic, just because it's stuck in my head at the moment. I'm 
was born in the 80s. So Knight Raider came out, like I said, completely different topic. Knight Raider came out uh, when I was in 84. I think it was only two or three. I was two years old at the time it came out. So here's my question. Was it was Knight Raider viewed at the time as a giant car commercial for the Trans Am, uh, uh, Pontiac Trans Am, or whatever whatever that version is? By the way, you uh, Gundam 00 fans, that's where the phrase Trans Am comes from, in case you didn't know. Uh, was it viewed as a giant car commercial, or was it just kind of, oh, that's the car that they had? And keep in mind, I'm not a car enthusiast. The uh, reason I ask is because I remember watching a few of the episodes, and, and, and I was never a huge Night Raider fan. Like, it was on, and I watched it, and that's all well and good. Uh, but when the 2008, 2009 version came along, uh, I intentionally watched that. And one of the one of the things that bothered me, I don't remember much about that one either, just because I like, don't care. Uh, but one of the things that bothered me about the about the the sequel, I guess it is technically a sequel. By the way, it comes with its own its own card this way. Same features as the previous card. Yeah. So, anyways, um, what bothered me about Night Raider 2008-2009 is you god don't fall over is that um it was they were using was it Dodge or Ford I'm, I'm not trying to be offensive what was the car um oh, oh it, it was a Dodge um uh, what was the car they used was it a Viper no 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 it wasn't a Viper or was it I don't remember Anyways, the thing that bothered me, or one of the things, is that the new kit, I think it was called, was it Nine Industries 3000 at that point, um, what bothered me is that it could, there was nothing that car couldn't do. I mean, literally nothing. It was like R2-D2, except in the modern era, and not as cute. Um, you know, there were, there were so many gadgets and stuff happening in there that, like, it didn't, um, there wouldn't have been physical space on the inside, just for the, the, the different gadgets that it had. And then, what was frustrating about it was that it would, wow, that's really, a okay, now this head design's a little bit better. Because the crest actually doesn't move on it. it the, the crest is permanently attached. Which is fine. And I know it's out of focus, blah, blah, blah. But, like, this, the, the, the yellow... I'm sorry, the gold-painted crest, uh, it doesn't lift up or down. And you can actually see it. It actually makes a difference. Oh, yeah, there it is again. You can see the, uh, the nose does not split open for the cannon mode. Anyways, um, what bothered me about the the new kit, aside from the massive number of internal gadgets and abilities it had, there was nothing it couldn't do, which kind of pissed me off because it also meant there was nothing that they could upgrade later on. Um, but it was the fact that it could transform into it could transform into an off-road mode. It could transform into transform into a um, a uh, it could p transform into a big pickup truck. It could transform into a god. Did it could it even have transformed into like a semi truck or something like that? I don't know. Uh, but it could transform into a a number of things, and that kind of pissed me off. Uh, ironically, Night Raider two thousand nine wasn't the first one to do that. Or coincidentally, I should say, coincidentally, uh, Knight Rider 2009 was not the first series to say that the car could transform it from a you know a normal civilian form into a combat mode. Uh, that actually popped up uh, a number of years earlier. I want to say in the, it was either the early 2000s or the late 90s when CGI was starting to leak into uh, television. 
there was another show. It was a you know another car hero show. It was called Viper, which was directly intentionally inspired by the Dodge Viper, which I brought up a few minutes ago, um, and that was less of a car commercial and just whatever but like was yeah my original question was how much of a car commercial was the original Knight Rider from the 80s versus the the 2008 2009 version whenever whenever it came out and you know did people view the original as a car commercial versus the um oh gosh the branding the very obvious branding of the uh of the updated series from the you know the the late 2000 aughts, I actually didn't mind the opening theme too much from the the reboot or the the update the the sequel series. Didn't, didn't mind that too much. The back half is identical to what it was on Hayabusa. So oh, I keep wanting to say I I I I, I, I Kami or something like that. What is it? Komachi. How am I not getting this? I'm gonna keep this over here so I can burn that into my mind. Komachi. Anyways. And again, why isn't there any hip articulation if there's so much good articulation in all the other places? <sighs> they painted it on there, but they didn't paint it on there. <laughs> and they actually have a silver lining against a white background, against the white primary. That's slightly... That, that doesn't work because the the white totally hides the silver the, the or it's just it itself gets lost in it so why would you bother for somebody who idolizes something that was never seen on screen Ava you sure have an awful lot of complaints about something that has white against silver there's a lot more decals on this guy so I'm not gonna bother showing you the train but anyways it's it's exactly the same <laughs> I just remembered yesterday, uh, if, if you've listened, in the, it, it actually is on the video, um, when I was at the uh, that, that little mini convention, or that first annual convention, how, how hilarious or how ironic is it to have, of all people, Darth Vader proclaiming The Last Jedi was a piece of crap. <laughs> I mean, the, the irony... I guess if Darth Vader says it, then it must be true. <laughs> These are intentionally designed to come off so you can attach them other places. Oh! Oh, that's cool! Am I on mute? No, I'm not. Okay. Oh! Uh so these are intentionally designed to come apart so that you can peg them into other places. Oh! Uh nice! And you can just peg them in anywhere you want to. So you can use them as a shield. You can plug them into the side of the things. And, ah, okay. I didn't even think of that till just now. Right. I didn't think of that till just now. That's, okay. All right. I don't know where I'd put it, though. It's kind of, that'd be an awkward place to peg those in. On the other hand, I've never, I've never subscribed to the idea of having of, of parts formers where you can take this part and stick it anywhere you want to I kinda didn't go there just because I wasn't raised on it I guess so anyways uh, Komachi here has a completely different crown it has a set of eyes on it and two horns hmm okay and kinda the only difference is just decorate decoration it's all pretty much the same isn't it no, multi details are different. Hmm. The details are different. Oops. Let's get that lined up. There we go. So they're actually different. Huh, I didn't realize that. It took all the time to remold that. I wonder why. Does it did it really make that much of a difference? Anyways, um Kamachi has uh has a new symbol right there. His own unique symbol, I guess. JR that is so tiny I can't read that. It is it is there is English lettering just I I can't read it. It's so tiny. But anyways, know that it's there. And unlike Hayabusa, Kamachi here is the ranged expert, ranged combat expert. So he comes with a pair of pistols. 
which turn into rifles. Rufles. You can see one just flips around and that's it. And yes, these weapons can also peg in a bunch of different places. And yes, I am going to have to attach decals to these. So, eh. I wonder if you can peg both of these together. Oh, you can. So you can totally get a double roofle in the game. Okay. And can you peg him on the outside of his arms? Yes, you can, presumably. Yes, you can. You can peg him into the sides of his arms. But primarily they are meant for pegging to the pegging into the hands. And there is again that stupid thing. They've got little there's a peg with a little tab about halfway up, so you can only you can only peg so much of it in there at one time. So stupid. Why do they do that? I don't get it. I don't get I don't like things they're different. And there's uh, Komachi. Suddenly so not only did they change the head and the, the, the torso pieces were changed so that you can't open up this cannon anymore because he already has enough guns on him. He doesn't need any more. Uh, so not only did they change those, but they also changed the style of his feet. He appears to be wearing uh, wooden sandals. Like, I don't know what they're called properly, but he appears to be wearing wooden sandals as opposed to Hayabusa. Hayabusa, who has lion feet. I guess. Is that what they're going for? I'm not certain. The other thing is that Hayabusa, it's just his face. And that's it. Like, there's no whatever it is. As opposed to Kamachi. And he very much has a... I guess it'd be an... Uh, how's it pronounced? Oni? 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 Uh, a demon. Kind of a demon shaped. He's got, he's got his robot eyes and then he's got a pair of kind of green circles, a green circle on either side, and then he's got a pair of demon head, or demon horns coming out the top, bald spot. Um, yeah, and this is also on a ball joint. I want to say the head's made of PVC. Again, no hip articulation. I mean, the articulation is exactly the same on, on all the figures, really. So there he is, Komachi. Hold it down, hold it a little lower. Watch where you're shooting. Okay, I can see where it's shooting. I'm going to put it over here. I'm going to stand over here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to bend way down like this so you can see my head properly. the way the trains link together at the waist allows for a little bit of variation. I don't know if the reverse is true of the other figure, but you know, presumably they are. You can take Hayabusa's upper half and plug it, plug it into Kamachi's lower half like this. And I gotta make certain I decorate him up properly. Oh. Yeah, I might put those to the outside. Ooh, and the friction on that's almost disappeared already. That's not cool. So you're going to peg the... It says to peg them in here, but on the picture... I don't know, maybe it's just maybe it's because they're tilted outward slightly. Maybe that's what it is. Moral of the story, you attach the blades to the back, thusly. Uh, you take Komachi's crown and you plug it onto Hayabusa's head and then you're going to take the rifles peg it into the not the not the shoulder armor but the, the, the inner side torso barely it barely fits I wonder if there's some photo photo manipulation happening here false advertisement oh interesting what you wouldn't be able to see with the instructions is that 
during the photographing phase, pre-production phase, the entire sword, all the gray bit, was actually painted gray. Because originally it was molded in the same color as the blade. That's interesting, and then they changed it to a plain gray. Hmm. I do not know what this combined form is called. But anyways, here is this thing. Again, I don't know what it's called. Not much of a combined form. I was kind of hoping there'd be a bit more armor that's attached. This just kind of pegs in pegs in uh, the weapons, the common weapons, and then gives it a crown. So, yeah. And, of course, you can absolutely do the same thing with uh, the reverse halves. Although, I don't know if they do this in the show, so I can't say if this is official or not. But the toys can do it, so presumably the answer is yes. So, there's nothing to say that you can't do the same thing with... Uh, forgot it anyways. Ah! No sooner did I flip that over. Komachi! Damn it, why can I not remember that? Komachi and Hayabusa. Hayabusa. So, you know, I don't know if this happened in the show. Presumably it does. Whatever. We got some uh, Transformers Super Link action happening here, though, so... Hmm. Oh, you know, maybe I could take these and attach them to this somehow. That'd be an interesting little challenge. It's going to look ridiculous, but let's see what happens. I have no idea how you would attach this, though. It doesn't have anywhere to attach to. Creativity! Not, not one of my better traits. Neither is improvisation, I'd like to point out. Okay, well, I can attach that one over there. I should totally have pulled out Rail Racer, now that I think about it. Oh, come on, seriously? This is why I don't do unboxings right here, is because I have very little space to work with. <sighs> Gosh, if only I had functional hip joints to work with. Okay, so, you know, I got, I got those on, but they're very, very floppy. Maybe I can give them wings. Let's see if I can give them wings. He, I mean, he's a red bull, so why not? No, don't fall over again. God damn it. I have no idea what this is going to do, but... It says I can't, or there's nothing to say I can't do it, so I'll do it. Okay, so, like, this is the kind of shit you can, you can get yourself into if you want to. So, I don't know, it's like... Wings or missile launchers or... I don't know. The point is, these toys give you that option, uh, and 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 again, I'll reiterate, it's not not something I ordinarily subscribe to, but it it is an option. So uh, yeah, I really really wish they had hip joints because they've got everything else. I don't know why they don't have hip joints, but officially, I don't know if this exists or not. And I suspect you could take the sword here, plug it into um, the sheet, or you could plug it into. Uh, the base, plug it into this, and then use this for something. I don't know that the combination of that, whatever. So uh, that's it. That's it for me, Shinkalian. That's that's my exposure, and <coughs> and like I said, I don't have I don't have any attachment to it whatsoever. It's just kind of trains, robots, done. Although I suppose this is my way of getting revenge against Bandai Plex Toei for the disaster that was Tokyo Jer, you know. And saying like, yeah, this is how you do trains. Trains that combine with each other. Well, kind of. Uh, this is how you do trains that combine with each other. This is how you do a train transformer. This is how you do it. And this is how you make it work. As opposed to the whatever it is that, that Plex came up with because Bandai America was too fucking lazy to make a, to make a combiner rather than, you know, the gimmick, gimmick, gimmick all the time. Or supposedly. So there's that. And get your hands in there. Come on. So there's that. There's that. Alright, I totally forgot. There were... Uh, there's like three or four other Shinkalian uh, trains uh, that, that, that are also, you know, in the same vein as this. 
Uh, one had a trident and one had a spear or one had uh, oh one had the crossing guard blades you could attach it to the forearms that was I almost got that one but then I realized like you know what let's just start with this and see what happens you know if you like them if you don't like them you can always get other ones later on and then apparently there's an even bigger you know stands about this this much taller version uh, it's like a super you know souped up trainer whatever it is or souped up combiner whatever it is so um you know i'm not these are harmless fun and whatever and yeah it's it's fine it's fine it's fine whatever but uh yeah am i gonna get the uh am i gonna get the larger one mm, probably not although i might get the evangelion themed one 